the trend of boyfriend jackets basically involves a you know oversized coat so we can look about it a couple different ways number one start off with your f uh, fashion figure however you want to draw the figure standing straight up and down contraposto left or right really doesn't matter to me the body type itself doesn't really matter if you know they call it a boyfriend jacket but if you want to draw a male model and simply draw an oversized coat on them well that baggy look is still part of this year's trend so if I start with my fashion figure the first thing I kind of want to establish is the large sort of shoulder pads oversized look so I'm gonna come out off their original shoulders pretty much thinking the fabrics gonna lean right on the actual shoulder but bump out considerably um, that's going to create this sort of crease and fold, that sort of classic baggy jacket look. And as I'm working, I'm going to kind of lighten up and lose the model underneath it. For the sleeves, in an arm like this, where the arm is sort of sticking out, well, the fabric on one side will probably be pretty close to that arm. To make the large, oversized sort of sleeves, I would drape that over the hand and then the lower part of this jacket would probably dangle you can see because this arm sticking out this side of the clothing is really close to the original arm I drew this side of the clothing is pretty far off that'll go into the body I can go ahead and sort of clean some of that up again I'm going for that oversized jacket look finish the cuff down here this little bump out over here will be her hand. I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple of fingers just to give you a sense of what's going on. The front part over here, what we call the lapel, the lapel is going to be where the coat's open. I'm going to do this coat open, not buttoned up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out from the neck. I'm going to follow the contour of her body, her bust line, and then sort of down the rest of her body here. This is going to be the edge of my coat. Again, I'm going to make this coat drape pretty low so it'll come down beneath her hips. And then what I'll do is I'll draw the one side of it. Pretty much hugging her body, not that tight to the original drawing, and make that sort of drape out. Now, since she's standing at an angle, this side will kind of be covering a little bit more of her body. So again, I'll go down from the neck. I'll go to sort of straight down the same edge. And then I will drape out the jacket. Since her hip is sticking out, the jacket will stay close to her hip. It can kind of flare out down here. It's going to be my coat. On the sleeve on the opposite side, we already have this shoulder bunching out. It's going to kind of bend down. Again, this arm is sticking out. Where it's sticking out, the fabric that I'm drawing is going to be closer to the body. Sort of drape out down here by the wrist. And then the inside of that coat is going to be a little bit baggier. And again, I'm going to go ahead and erase some of those lines. We've got the basic silhouette of the boyfriend cut jacket. I'm going to go ahead and make that sleeve just a little longer and cover up some of the hand that I drew over there. Now what I'm going to do is just add a few wrinkles, certain key spots. I'm going to add a lapel to the jacket. The lapel is the collar of the jacket that's folded over. What I'll do is I'm going to start with sort of a diamond shape and then another diamond shape for our collar and right up to the neck. I'm going to do it on the other side. Since this side was bigger and wider, this side is thinner, the lapel will be a little bit thinner on this side since I'm looking at it from an angle. And then I'll go ahead and clean up my drawing a little bit get rid of some of those extra lines. So we'll see very quickly. I've got my oversized jacket. A couple different ways we can go about it. I'll do one more real quick. I'll do one that's sort of buttoned up and closed. 
We'll do it right over here. We've got the big shoulder pads that come out. Sort of fabric, since this one's standing up straight, is going to kind of flow and be draped all the way through. Big baggy sleeve. I'll go ahead and erase some of the underdrawing of where the arm went and where the shoulders went. This way we could just see the silhouette of the clothing. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I've got my shoulder pad. Got my fabric kind of going down. Hanging low on the hand. Big droopy sleeve. Get my silhouette. Erase some of the underdrawing. Make the side of the jacket, which is loose and not hanging towards the body. I'm going to go ahead and make this one even a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and erase some of the stuff underneath there. So we can focus just on the jacket itself. I'm going to go ahead and make my collar. This time I'm going to have the jacket buttoned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a V here. I'm going to decide one of the sides should come out a little further. And that can go almost straight down. And put a couple buttons on the jacket. Two or three tops. My lapel. Couple creases. Maybe if you want a pocket. It's my oversized boyfriend jacket from a different look. Opened and closed. Next thing that I'm going to go over, black face masks. So we're going to talk about the face itself. We should rough out where the eyes are going to go. I do want you to put eyes at least on there. Face mask, we can go pretty much to the height of the eye. All we got to do, sort of mark it off like that. On a three-quarter pose, you would have a short side and a longer side. Black face masks, real easy to add on your actual fashion figure thing. Three-quarter pose should come off the face a little bit. Side of it goes this way. You do not have to color them in. You will color them in with photo P. I'm just making them black so you can see them. We've got another trend. Trend of the handbag. We've got a lot of different handbags that we can look at. I'll do a couple different ones uh, just so we have them. Um, I've got a little hand over here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her holding her bag. I'm going to start by making a handle. Let me just clean up this part of the drawing. And what I recommend to you is that you look up a particular handbag that you do want to draw, find the photo, and use it as a reference. For me, I'm going to make the handle first. And what you want to think of is if you're drawing it on an angle, I would make the front part of the handle a little bigger and the back part a little smaller. What I mean by an angle, I'm going to draw mine so you see the front edge of it. So it's being held diagonally at me. This will be the side, the bottom, and the top are both diagonals, and their diagonals going in the same direction. Kind of will get closer and closer if you continue those lines all the way out. I'll just have this as just a regular sort of handbag. You can go in and add, you know, straps or latches. You can add little, you know, buckles or sort of design elements if you want in there whatever you want. If you want to make it like it's a soft leather bag, 
I would go in and you could put a few little creases in it. So it looks like it's sort of puckered a little bit, not necessarily like a perfect suitcase. If you want, we could do something like a clutch. In this case, I'll have another little handout over here. If I draw fingers, I'll have a little clutch. The clutch, I'll just start with my little rectangle, diagonal. Make sure that the fingers look like they are longer than the actual bag itself. I'll do that front end over here. On the top. And if you want to get cute and give it sort of like a little stripe design or maybe like one of those ones that is sort of embroidered to have that little zigzag waffle shape, I would do that's a pretty easy one to do. Maybe another one that you may want to consider or try, a shoulder bag. You have to obviously start with your model. I would draw your clothes first and finish your figure. What I'll do on this one is I'm just going to draw the bag on her. And we'll just pretend that I put clothes on her already. We'll get our arm and shoulder finished and hip. You can drape it over her if you want over the shoulder or on the same shoulder on the side. I would start with my where's my sort of um, strap is going to be. I would follow the contours of the body a little bit so up here on the chest is kind of the line would be diagonal down to kind of go in line with her bust line then maybe start bending straight down after the bust I'll make this sort of an oversized sort of messenger bag you can decide whatever size you want to make it and in your case what I would recommend again is get an image that you like off offline of a bag that you want to draw and use that image as a reference. I have my strap to go along with it. I have it coming back off the back side. You can see that in this particular drawing. And then the same thing goes you want to try to make it look like it's just a soft leather bag I would put a few wrinkles in it you might want to put like a flap over it some sort of buckle or design okay. so drawing bags what I would recommend to you is after you're done with the clothes look for pictures of bags and look for ones that you might want to draw if there's there's a lot more out there obviously than I have demoed if you find one that you like and you need to know how to draw it, you can always just ask and I'll help you out. I can do a demo any day. So we've got some clutch bags. We've got the boyfriend jackets. Uh, we've got the black masks. Uh, now let's turn our attention over to um, scarves and a variety of scarves. So how can we add scarves, head scarves to these designs and these drawings? Um, one of the things I tell you to do is draw them before you draw the hair. So let's just say I've got my little model. I've got her with her mask already on. Uh, this one I want to kind of do like a sort of band, a full full fledged bandana. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have I'm gonna create a line over here where I've decided that that's going to be the edge of the bandana. Okay, I'm going to make the bandana a little big a little bigger than her head because you want to think that she has hair that's all wrapped up in there. I'm going to go ahead and erase it so it's almost like a little cap on top of her head. Since it's going to be pulled into sort of a knot and maybe have a little bit like flowing, towards the back what I'll do is I'm going to put a few little lines like this, sort of making it feel like the material is being pulled back and scrunched into an area that would be a knot and then just for effect I think I would drape a little bit of that fabric down. I draw a teardrop looking shape maybe a little bit more um, drooped and sharp at the bottom of it and then to create the effect or at least the idea that this is fabric 
I would put a few lines here as if it's being pulled into that knot and then sort of flowing out. And then I would add whatever you want to add in terms of your model's hair. Uh, I'm just going to kind of color in for the time being. And just kind of give her some wavy dark hair underneath. Okay. I'll do another one that'll be more like a babushka where it's sort of wrapped around the entire face. So instead of that line being at the top along the brim of the head, this time it's going to be around the face. What I'll do is, since this is a three-quarter view, what you have is you have your eyebrows, you have your eyes, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame around the face. Then what I want to do is I want to, again, kind of treat the scarf as if it sort of wraps around the head, but allow it to be a little bit larger than the head so that it can essentially accommodate the um, hair in, underneath. I'll have it sort of come down. We can do a bunch of different things. One thing we want to do is that we want to show that it sort of gets wrapped underneath the chin. I'm going to clean up some of these lines of the original head so you can see what I'm doing. You can see how I've made the scarf a little bit bigger than the head. When we get down here by the chin, again, I'm going to put some of those little lines and creases in. That's a little way to kind of cheat and let your drawing look like that's fabric being pulled in tight. And for this one, I'll have just a little bit of fabric underneath from that knot and maybe just a little bit of hair sneaking out underneath on the back end. I'll do one more here and be sort of maybe folded tight as sort of like a headband. I'll just draw that basic shape and then what I would do outside of it is I would just come up with whatever you want your hair to look like. In this case I'm just going to do something puffy and big. And that could be the back tail of my bandana. So a couple different ways to add head scarves or add scarves to it. I've done oversized jackets, I've done bags, I've done head scarves, I've done masks. Um, and I think the last thing I'll do is the knee-high boots. We'll switch back over and we'll go to the boots. How do we do this? Well, first we need feet, or at least the size of the feet. For a straightforward view, this sort of triangular shape will work. For the side view, you can see if you want to do heels, this would be the way we do them. Can add sort of like a wedge back here for that. For this, we don't really need to add much except to the front. We want to decide where these boots are going to come up to. I would get the height of them overall. In the front around the knee, I would have it hug the body. In the back around the knee, I would have a few creases here and there. What I would do is have a few of those near the calf area. And then basically, I would just fall along all the way down to the ankle. I'm on the ankle where it bends, I might put a few little bumps. Over here where I made those little creases, I had a couple lines. Those lines are kind of a uh, hint at the idea of creases and folds in the boot, since most likely they're leather or some sort of synthetic material. Um, they're going to sort of bend around the leg, and there will be some wrinkles and crinkles. And look at that. We'll do the same thing on this side. The opening of the boot a little bit larger since they go thigh high. I'll make a couple little bumps. I'll follow the contour of the leg for the most part down towards the ankle. We'll make a bump or two by the ankle. Add a few lines of stress in there after I'm done erasing. Thigh 
high boots. Do them one more time. Decide how tall they, they want them to be. Make sure you have feet drawn on already. You can add a heel if you want. You can make it a wedge. You can make them flat. Whatever works for you. Up near the top, the boot is going to be a little bit on the larger side. Again, so you can put your whole leg through it. You make a few bumps where fabric or material and leather might be wrinkled a little bit. And then through the calf down to the ankle, pretty much fairly straight through. Maybe a little bit of a notch and a bump in around the ankle. Whatever you want to put in there as far as the heel goes, that's up to you. Again, a couple folds, a couple wrinkles here, especially around the knee. The knee is where there's going to be a little bit more material. The material is going to crease a little bit uh, when, when you walk and you flex through it. Down through the rest of the leg. You pretty much hug the rest of the calf. And again, draw your fashion model's body first, then add the clothing to your model. Um, my drawings are far from finished, uh, but I'm doing three of them. You only have to do one. Again, with your drawing, you have a list of 10 different trends. You only have to apply three of them to your drawing. One of them should definitely be a bag. And you should probably take advantage and put a black mask on it too. Outside of that, as long as you add one more element, you can design however you want. We're going to spend the next few days doing the drawings. And then we're going to spend the end of the week starting to put this in photo P and coloring them.